Good morning, or hello, and welcome to a little knitting episode. It's morning here in Denmark, and I have dared to go outside. And when I say dared, it's because I had actually planned to do that yesterday. And first, somebody started cutting their hedge with a really noisy chainsaw of some kind. And then I thought, okay, I can do it at night. And then somebody put out on a Facebook group, we're going to have a party, and they're going to be out in the garden. So I thought, okay, never mind. So. I'm crossing my fingers and I've already heard a bit of noise, so I may have to do this in installments, but never mind. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I'm just going to freeze myself here and do a little voiceover to introduce myself, which apparently I forgot. Hi, my name is Hille or Hella. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for uh, coming on board with me and uh, my knitting here. If you're a new viewer, Thank you so much for taking a chance and clicking on this video. You never know what you're going to get in this uh, forum. I'm sitting in a corner of my terrace here where it's a little windy, but um, the reason why I wanted to do that is simply because I could. Um, you never know when, when you have a streak of weeks where it's just gray and dull and, and rainy maybe. We haven't had any rain so far for weeks in Denmark and it's officially a drought. Um, but even so, I think even though people are not that happy with that, everybody is happy that the summer is finally here. So I thought I would just bring you out into my garden. I've got two, um, three historical roses behind me. Of course, I forget what the middle one is called, the white one, but that one up there is called Lancaster and York. Um, the War of the Roses in England, so some of them will be lighter than others. They're not exactly white and red, but ostensibly. And the pink one is called Jacques Cartier. I've got a few things to share with you today. Um, I've got two finished objects, and I've got two works in progress. And then I have some thoughts on stash and knitting queue that I want to share with you, and maybe um, hear what you have to say about that, because, uh, you know, th there's a fine balance between feeling inspired and feeling overwhelmed. Um, from what people um, show you online. Um, and I'm trying to navigate that line. But first, a little bit of admin. Um, as most of you know by now, my Instagram account was hacked, but I still get messages from people saying, oh, you wrote me this message, and I thought you were such a kind person from your videos. Why do you write like that? Well, yeah. Um, the person who hacked my account can't even distinguish between people's languages, so he's written Danish uh, messages to some people who are clearly from the United States so you know that alone should give you a hint but sometimes y you don't get that hint I mean I fell for the trap so my old account is no longer in use well it is but not by me um, so you know I've reported it and so have many others and yet Instagram haven't really done anything about it so all you can do is unfollow and maybe report and ignore any messages and um, if you want to find me on my new account, that would be splendid, if you are on Instagram. I tried to contact as many people as I could on Instagram, but after a while, um, I couldn't send any more messages, like after maybe 8 or 10. And somebody told me that it's Instagram that stops you from doing it because they figure it might be spam. So that they will stop. <laughs> okay, so, so I, I, there was no way I could reach everybody, so I'm trying to say it here. I did say it at the end of my last video because I didn't want it to color the whole video, but some people maybe didn't watch it till the end, so they didn't know. Uh, but now I hope you know. So the old um, Instagram account that's on some of my early videos, like maybe two episodes two and three, that is no longer in use. I have changed it in the description box, but obviously not in the video. So that out of the way, um, as I said, I have the knitting, and I will also talk a little bit about um, potential knit along towards the end. I know not everybody necessarily wants to participate in that. It's gonna be extremely casual, no matter what. I also just wanted to share a little quote before we begin. I'm a sucker for quotes, I always have been. I've always had lots of books where I've collected quotes. And this time it's a very simple quote, verging on the banal, but it's because I went to this music festival or culture festival recently in Denmark called Heartland, and um, the main attraction for me there was Sting. Um, and he, uh, of course, there's a line in An Englishman in New York that says, be yourself no matter what they say. And um, it was actually, before I knew I was going to his concert, that was why I named my New York videos A Day in New York of his an Englishman in New York 
um, because he's kind of been there through my, well, I'm tempted to say my whole upbringing. Uh, well, at least from my teenage years. And he has um, said more on that quote that's similar and maybe expands it a little, which I thought was, for me, interesting in this forum. Okay, so let me just find the text. You have to be yourself. Be very honest about who and what you are. And if people still like you, that's great. If they don't, that's their problem. Okay, so that might sound a little harsh, but um, I think it's so easy in this day and age when so many people are on social media and we see other people on social media to let other people's um, negative opinions get us down. And so this is just a little sort of, you know, encouragement to not let negative comments get you down. Um, it's a potentially vulnerable place to put yourself out there on social media and it can sometimes feel a little daunting, to be honest. Um, and research indicates that one negative comment has to be compensated by five positive ones, whether it's on social media or in a conversation with somebody, you know, which is why those negative comments can sometimes linger. And of course, why, why let them do that? So me, myself, I'm trying to be mindful of what I put out there, you know, anything negative I say, because I mean, we all do say something every now and then that we didn't mean to, but also not to let it get to us when somebody doesn't like us. <laughs> I think it's uh, typical of women to want a lot of people to like you. Men care less. Um, and I think we have to not mind when somebody doesn't like us. And I think it's okay, you know, we don't like everybody either, so what's the big deal? And Sting knew that, but of course he's a man. I don't know, it could just be me, but I think Men are more, eh, okay, so he doesn't like me, fine. And we're like, oh no, what did I do wrong? Could I do better? I don't know, maybe that's just me. <laughs> All right, moving on. Also, um, I will list everything that I talk about in terms of uh, patterns and yarns, etc., in the description box below. So you don't even have to um, spend time writing, could you please tell me the name of that pattern and where I can find it? Because it will be listed below in the description box. So I encourage you to check that out if you're interested in some of what I mentioned here. Okay, so what am I wearing? My first finished object is of course this Joni top by Natasha Hornby of Moonstruck Knits. I will insert little clips of me wearing it with different outfits just so you can see, you know, you don't necessarily have to be all romantic or in all white, uh, you know, obviously. Um, but I just I think it's fun to play around with how you can dress up the romantic uh, style of this or you could dress it down. Um, it can be something that's totally subtle and in the background or it can be kind of a centerpiece. The pattern was really well written and had a lot of details and um, instructions and things like that. So it was, it was definitely a pleasure to knit it. The pattern gives you the option to shape the body a little so that it tapers or to work it straight. I did the shaping. The only thing I would maybe change if it were me would be to put more of the sizes, the same size together because there were several pages where there was just like a tiny paragraph that was for my size. I did the second size and then the rest were for other sizes. So when I had to print out because I like having things on paper, I don't always, but I did here. Um, I had to sort of, you know, most of the most of that sheet of paper was irrelevant for me, so I had maybe 12 printed pages where nine of them were relevant for me or something like that. So, but I'm, I'm not sure if there's any way around that. Um, but anyway, it the sizes, the chest measurements uh, go from um, 85 centimeters to 155 centimeters or 33.5 inches to 61 inches. So it's pretty size inclusive. There's a chart. Uh, and there's also descriptions. Um, once you get to the chart, there are no longer any descriptions, but it's a really easy and intuitive chart to follow. Um, it doesn't sort of, you know, it repeats the same um, pattern throughout, so it's not like it changes all, all over the place, unlike the one I'm working on now. The yarn, as I mentioned on previous episodes, is called El Lino, and um, looks like this. And it's this, um, white chainette linen, 100% linen from a German company called Schöpfel. El Lino is Italian, isn't it? So, mm, well, anyway, presumably means 
the linen. The yarn felt pretty soft to knit with. It wasn't like harsh, but uh, once I blocked it, it became a little papery. And it's also a little sort of, um, I don't know, it's not super soft to the touch. It's strange because that's only sort of how it feels because it's completely soft on the body. You know, my sensitive skin is very grateful for uh, yarns like these. So that's definitely a plus. Um, in terms of construction, you begin at the back and then uh, you, I think, I forget so quickly after I finished the pattern, you knit the back down and then you pick up for the shoulders here um, and then you knit the first bit flat and then you join in the round. Um, and in this one I didn't get any difference in gauge, unlike the next one I'm going to show you. Um, so it, it worked out fine. Strangely, when I was done knitting it, it was like the whole thing had sort of, well, not that much, but it had twisted just a tiny bit. So it was like, you know how you, when you buy really poor quality t-shirts, the seam will begin to turn after you've washed it once. Well, it was sort of like that. And I was like, oh no, what have I done? I thought maybe I'd, you know, twist something wrong. Although it's difficult to adjust that when it's how you knit automatically. But when I washed and blocked it, it it came out perfectly. I just made sure to look at the measurements in the schematic and, and put pins in on my blocking mats to make sure that it was straight and it was fine. I asked you about needle sizes for the little sleeve caps here um, because the pattern requires you to knit it in three point, on a 3.5 millimeter needle and I didn't have one of those. So I asked you about that and thank you so much for all your replies. I would say about 70% of them said, just go for the three millimeter needle, it'll be fine. And some said, well, maybe you should go for the 3.25 millimeter because we are knitters. And I felt really bad about that. Um, but in the end, I chose the three millimeter. But as it turns out, I thought it was more logical to pick up more stitches than what the pattern asked for. Because otherwise I thought there was like a lot of gaps. Like if you have, um, if you've knitted like maybe uh, the section was maybe eight stitches if I just picked up three stitches in that, I was afraid of maybe cinching the fabric. So I picked up a little more and maybe that's why it worked out because it's, um, to me, I'm, I'm happy about it. It could also just be that um, it would have worked out anyway. The, the difference is so slight, I'm not sure. But the rest of the body is knitted on uh, 3.5 millimeter and that apparently worked fine. I was for once on gauge and uh, it could be due to the yarn because I found that my gauge definitely changes uh, according to the yarn that I use. Of course also the designer, I know that, but also the yarn changes. And one thing that I found interesting that I thought about is um, because it also tells you to pick to use 3.25 millimeter for the neckline is that a pattern always asks you to um, knit, knit a swatch uh, to measure a gauge based on something on the body, in this case um, the non-lace part of the pattern, which is the same for the one I'm knitting right now. And sometimes I kind of wish there was an extra gauge, you know, for, for something like, like a neckline or, or a sleeve cap or ribbing or something, because I always want to make sure that I'm on gauge. In this case it would, it would be no big deal, I could just pick it back up and it would be fine. By the way, uh, while I remembered, Thank you so much also for suggesting different kinds of yarns for uh, some of Natasha Hornby's shawls. Um, there were several people who mentioned Baby Yak, so I definitely made a note of that. So my other finished object is another summer top. This beautiful top from Agonit called Ureum. And I think I'm just going to change into that. So this is the Ureum top by Agonit. It's a very um, simple and elegant top. I think it goes well with a lot of things. I've already worn it at the before mentioned uh, Heartland Festival. And the pattern is uh, its similar to the Joni top where you start at the back. I like how it has a bit of lace here, but not too much, which means that uh, one day I wore a black bra under, you could just see uh, the hint of the black, but it's not, it's not too daring. Um, and also, um, you know, your bra straps are hidden here so that's nice um, it's an eye cord edge here it rolled a little when I was finished knitting it but it came out 
um, nice and flat in the blocking if you put pins in of course it's a folded down neckband and also with a hem um, in terms of sizing it goes from um, chest measurement of 81 centimeters up to 126 centimeters I forget how much that is in inches maybe around 50 inches it's pretty size inclusive I would say I saw a, a different very different body types in the testing group I was part of the testing team here um, and you know there was one who knitted this the one or two who knitted the smaller size than this and then there was uh, somebody who knitted the largest size I think um, and it, it looks good on on all body types I would also say that um, we did it in two different types of yarn um, I've shown you the yarn combo before but I knitted in a combination of Isaia Trio 1 which is a cotton linen uh, lyocell combination which is very soft and has this sheen to it I can't show you because I used all of it because I only had two and a half balls of yarn um, but then the third strand was this um, Japanese cotton and I was worried before I washed it that this papery thing would make it a little scratchy and at first it did feel scratchy but not at all it's only scratchy in in the same way that a leaf on a, on a tree or a flower would be scratchy that it's not a round um, strand but it's it's totally soft um, I have to say mine uh, it didn't stretch at all when I blocked it that's not entirely true because I stretched the neckline a little because I'd knitted it too tightly apropos the needle size uh, discussion before this one were okay so some pigeons are flapping their wings up in the trees <laughs> okay um, well it's their habitat I guess so that's fine um, but the pattern asks you to uh, pick up for the neckline and knit it on a 2.5 millimeter needle I didn't have that I'm tempted to say I didn't have that either and it was a weekend and I didn't want to not knit the shops were closed I didn't want to not finish it um, so I decided to knit quite tightly on a three millimeter needle and and voila that worked as well um, I knitted it too tightly almost so I had to really stretch it when I blocked it uh, because I, otherwise I couldn't get my head through without sort of <coughs> yanking it on but now it's perfect I really like it I like that it, it, you only just have it sort of uh, up against your collarbone you don't have to show your whole chest but it does hide your bra straps so um, you know there's something about it reminds me a little of origami this uh, maybe it's because of the Japanese cotton but it's also because of the simple lace pattern incidentally it's the same lace pattern that they have on their sarang sweater there it's just horizontal on the body and on the sleeves and your riem by the way means summer I think in Korean in terms of yarn some of the other uh, testers used uh, a strand of the trio one and a strand of the Japanese cotton and then a strand of um, alpaca from Isaia I didn't do that because I didn't need extra heat as I mentioned in the last video and also I was afraid that it might be a little scratchy since it's a quick pattern by the way may I just say that's a definite plus because it's knit on well let me get back to the needle but um, some of the testers quickly made another one in silk in like a kind of a hand dyed silk I think and it looked really beautiful so I was very tempted to do that as well I think the required needle size is 4.5 millimeter I started out using 4.5 here and actually I also continued once I joined and then I realized that um, the pattern was becoming I could see that the lace was sort of I'm not gonna stretch it now but it was becoming sort of wider and the stockinette stitches were becoming a little looser and so I realized that sometimes not not in all yarns sometimes once I've joined I knit more loosely when it's only uh, knit stitches and I've heard people say that oh be careful when you knit because you will knit more loosely once when you use the purl stitches up here um, no for me it's the opposite I knit more tightly when every other round is a purl round. I'll try to show you a little clip of me knitting on my current uh, work in progress where you can see me knitting the purls and I think that's the reason why I'm a tight knitter I think is because of the purls because when I knit a purl stitch I um, oh there's my cat <laughs> um, 
when I knit a purl stitch, I, I yank it toward the end. I don't know why I do that. I don't know if my uh, friend from the Faroe Islands who taught me to knit a million years ago taught me to do that, or if it's just something I do. I have no idea. I can't not do it now because that's that's the way I purl. But so um, so this part up here was tighter. So I changed to four millimeter needle for the rest of the body. I ripped back and changed to four millimeter, and that made it fine. I think that could also be one of the reasons why I'm a relatively slow knitter because if you imagine that every time you purl you yank it a little little it's it's all the extra movements that make you um, a slower knitter here's the cat <laughs> hi okay he doesn't like that he wants his freedom it's summer he's all over the place strangely it didn't happen on this one I have no idea why um, maybe because it was on a 3.5 millimeter or maybe because there was a larger lace panel i have no idea but as long as you notice when you're when you're knitting every now and then i have to remind myself to take a look at it and also both in this one and the in the other one to look at the lace panel have i followed instructions is there any any part of the lace pattern that's out of sync or that doesn't look right because then you have to rip back and sometimes you can just sort of knit away and you're not noticing where you're going so I, I tend to do that every now and then and about the having to use 4.5 up here and 4 millimeter down there down here it's sort of similar to when people say that uh, they go up a needle size when they knit color work and I don't I don't necessarily go down but I certainly don't go up because I will pull my floats um, and and I'm more mindful of the the gauge when I when I do that so those rules don't necessarily apply to everyone. Let me just get something to drink. Cat's walking around here for once feeling social. Well, he's social also. He's a social animal when it comes to taking walks with me. But apart from that, he's a cat. And oh, I, I suspect that the whole tugging the pearl stitches is only possible when you're a continental knitter. So maybe you're automatically going to knit more loosely if you're if you knit the English style. I don't know. I haven't tried it. So those were my two finished objects. I'm very happy about them. They definitely have a place in my wardrobe when I don't just want to wear a t-shirt or an ordinary tank top, but maybe want to upgrade my outfit just a little bit. And um, they're quick knits, which is something I'm completely grateful for. There are no sleeves to be knitted. So that's absolutely wonderful. And the yarn is soft on my skin. So, um, considering that I didn't knit any summer tops last year, I'm like, why? Why? Because I was all about the sweaters. I'm still all about the sweaters. But I have to say, um, summer tops now have a place in my life. Uh, especially if they're really good patterns like these that are simple but elegant and not too sort of homemade looking, but handmade. I could certainly get used to not having to knit sleeves if I didn't love the sweaters so much. But it's it's actually a welcome change, you know, because you can you can knit faster, so you don't feel as frustrated that there's this long queue of things you want to knit. You can easily feel that sort of um, satisfaction that you've completed a project. <laughs> he wants to be cuddled. Yeah, he's such a spoiled cat. I swear to God. Okay, so moving on to my first work in progress. It's the um, Couture Top by Sari Nordland. I had my eye on it already last summer, but as I said, I really wasn't digging the summer tops. I was kind of like, eh, is, am I going to want to wear knitwear when it's warm, when it's hot even? Um, does it not look maybe a little too sort of uh, like something you made in a craft class in eighth grade or something? And also, I just, you know, I like something simple, I thought. <laughs> Uh, like just plain t-shirts, white t-shirts. Um, but I saw that one and I th thought it was really beautiful. But I also thought, uh, maybe it's a little tricky. Um, I did still knit uh, lace work last summer. Uh, but it was a blouse in silk mohair. And before that, a cardigan in silk mohair that also had lace. And now I'm working on the kutar top. I haven't gotten very far yet, as you can see. Um, but it's also um, this lace top and 
This is uh, another thread because I've used the provisional cast on because towards the end you pick up here and I think it's a I think you need a an I cord and then that continues into the straps. So I'm not even sure if this is the back or the front, but it's and they're similar anyway. Um, so that's a very beautiful pattern, I think. Um, and I like it looks very broad actually here, but it's because it she uh, very brilliantly has decided that it should cover that part of your body that I for one have no desire to showcase to the world. <laughs> you know, under my uh, armpits here. So I think it's really beautiful. She writes in the pattern that she was inspired by the Japanese uh, lace work Bible, I think it's sometimes referred to, which I also borrowed from the library. There's There are two now by Hitomi Shida. <laughs> um, and it's just, it's just beautiful. So she was inspired by that and I'm totally digging those lace patterns. The yarn is uh, knitting for all of pure silk in this ice blue color that I just love. Yeah, it's a uh, barrette silk. I'm not really sure what barrette silk is, honestly, but it's very soft. Um, she in the in the pattern she has knitted in I think um, linen or cotton or something, and she suggests those. So I was a little worried that it would look okay uh, or fit the gauge in in um, in uh, silk. So I went on Ravelry and I saw that several other people had also knitted this top in um, knitting for olive silk. So I thought I would be okay, and I I hit gauge strangely again because you know I've just been so used to always having to go up a needle size because I'm a tight knitter. But maybe it's because it um, plant-based fibers. I, I don't know. I have no idea. Or else it's because Sari Nordland knits in the same way. I, I don't know. But at any rate, I'm knitting on a very small, to me, very small needle here. This is a 3.0 millimeter. And this is again the Knit Pro needles. Uh, because those are the ones I have right now. And when I get to the main part of the body that's knitted in stockinette, I will change to 3.5. So this is actually my only acquisition, uh, which I'm completely fine with. And I'm also very, I didn't buy it until I knew that I would be knitting this particular pattern because I didn't just want it lying around. And it was, what, 260 Danish kroner, including the postage, because I only need three balls of the silk and 200, what's that, in dollars. So that's like, that's less than $40 for a silk top. I think that's very reasonable. And I'm having so much fun knitting this. I mean, there's just something about lace work that I love. Um, you're constantly sort of engaged, but it's not too much. And maybe also here, you know you're not going to be doing it on any sleeves. So it's gratifying in that sense. Um, the pattern so far is um, well written, easy to understand. I did have to go on YouTube to look at their provisional cast on. For some reason, the link that she provided in the pattern didn't work, but you know, we all go on Google or YouTube these days and find uh, various videos and it, it worked fine. Apropos acquisitions, I'm actually awaiting some yarn from the United States sent to me by a very generous viewer, Sherry. Hi, Sherry. And it should be arriving any day. I got a message from the Danish postal company last week that uh, I had to pay this uh, fee, the import tax and VAT, um, which is just so annoying. Uh, but that amounts to almost $100 extra. I kind of knew it. I didn't know it would be that much, but I said to myself, well, there, there's nothing I can do about it. And I mean, honestly, I got this as a gift, so I'm just very, very grateful and I cannot wait to get it. It's um, the most beautiful yarn and I'm going completely out of my, well, I'm going partly out of my comfort zone and I have some very interesting plans for it. Sherry helped me pick them out and, uh, well, I'll tell you all about that when I get to the yarn because it's, uh, yeah, I felt there was a little uh, joint venture there with Sherry and the people in the shop. So that's just so lovely. So um, hopefully in my next video, my next knitting video, I'll be able to show you those yarns and maybe share a little bit about what I intend to knit with it. Anyway, so um, 
I'll keep you posted also on the Kutar top. My other work in progress, I'm not very far. Oh, apropos the yarn I'm using here. <laughs> it's a strange little project that I think I decided to begin simply because of the designer. I'm not sure how much I'm actually going to be using this, um, but it's um, a snood of all things. Um, it's called the Bunrin Snood by Iri Shimizu. And I'm just obsessing over this designer these days. I could knit like at least half of her patterns. This is as far as I've gotten so far. So you could see that it's also lace work. So different lace patterns will um, comprise the snood, but also it'll be um, it'll be worked in different yarns. So I've begun this. I'm not. I've gotten. I haven't gotten very far yet. I've gone uh, stash diving, as they call it. It's not a very deep dive because my stash isn't humongous, but I do have a bit of a stash now. And um, apropos what I'm gonna mention when it comes to stash, um, I'll just do some of that now. It stresses me out just a tiny bit if I have too much yarn lying around. Again, it's like a fine balance between the luxury of having yarns and knowing that, ooh, I'm gonna begin that project but also going, oh my gosh, I have yarn for, I don't know, eight sweaters. And then you've got all the scraps, uh, the leftovers from previous projects. Uh, and, and they're mounting up, you know, so you don't, you don't just want to continue. I don't just want to continually be all squirrely, like, oh, there's another shiny thing. Oh, there's another yarn that's beautiful. I really, I want to be more mindful of my knitting. So I had maybe half a skein left of the far, which, by the way, I uh, used um, for my uh, Cozy Cowl by Anne Vinsel. And um, it's this gorgeous dusty rose color that I think is just so beautiful. And it's, again, one of those chain yarns. It's super, super soft. So, of course, the criteria here, in terms of yarn choices, she wants you to choose, I think, I think she uses two or three different yarns and you can use how, however many yarns you want because she, she moves from pattern to pattern uh, which means that you can do your own take on it I always love that when when you know there are clear instructions in terms of um, the lace panel but apart from that I can do my own thing you know I like that so this is the one I chose to begin with because it's so soft and a snood obviously is going to be you know folded around your neck I'm not going to wear it the way she does it on the introductory photo where it's just sort of hanging. I guess she has to show you what, what it looks like in its entirety. But I'm going to be, of course, doubling it over around my neck. Um, so it has to be something that's really soft. That's a criteria for me because my the skin on my neck is very sensitive. So this is the first one I began with because it's super soft. And then I thought to continue, I have a few more yarns that I might include here. I'm just going to stop with the far when I run out and then it'll have, you know, come to good use. Um, the other yarn I have planned is one called North from a shop in Denmark here, here in Odense called Tendegrønt. And it's this very soft, um, I think it's a mixture between Merino and Cashmere. I forget the content. I used it in my caramel sweater by Petite Knit last spring. I probably have to double or combine it with another yarn. Possibly one of these two. These are um, leftover silk mohair from Ladybug yarn that I used in my uh, Out of My Dreams blouse, the lace blouse I knitted last summer. And of course it's because these are similar in color. You know, so we're on the dusty rose spectrum here. But I'm not sure because I'm afraid these might be a little scratchy, although, you know, they're not really scratchy and combined with the north, it might be good. And then I had a whole um, ball of yarn left over from my C2 blouse or C2 sweater from Hilga Isea. And this lovely gray sandy color from Isea, which is Eco Baby uh, color E2S. And it's also super soft, super soft. Um, it's 68% baby. I'll 
Paca and 32% organic cotton and it's so soft. I can definitely have that close to my neck as well. So I'm probably going to use that because I had this whole skein left over. And that was probably because I had, I used a different yarn for that sweater. And I find sometimes that when I recalculate, I mean, I take, you know, I calculate the same number of yards or meters, but yarns act differently, even if it's the same yardage. Um, so I'm, I always sort of try to play it safe and get a little more maybe than, than necessary because I've also tried the opposite where I didn't have enough. And then another, I had a whole skein left over from that same sweater of um, Gepard Gun cashmere lace, which is the softest, softest cashmere. And I'm hesitant to use it in this pattern because I kind of wanted it to be its own thing, maybe with other um, skeins of this, maybe, you know, for the Sophie shawl, not the little scarf, but the huge Sophie shawl. That would mean I would have to buy what three more four more I forget so I'm sort of not sure about that yet I'll see what it looks like when I begin to knit this did I mention that this was the wolf folk yarn far I want to try all the wolf folk yarns at some point oh my gosh they're so gorgeous and so soft and I love the colors they're so muted um, and strangely the when I've seen sometimes their their names they're all Danish so I think there's some definitely somebody in Wolfolk yarn who who has a Danish background so based on uh, my two finished objects and my two works in progress clearly I'm very into lace work and I think it's because it's, it's summer um, I can't say I tend to be into lace work during the summer because it's only been one summer uh, the previous summer where I knit it but I, I, I seem to see a pattern already and then it becomes more sort of cables and color work during the winter season and I just, I love the Japanese uh, lace style, but not only the lace patterns, I also love the, the silhouettes. For instance, Iri Shimizu, she has some beautiful patterns. I really want to knit at some point. Um, and it's sort of like the other Japanese designer, Yonko Okamoto. They remind me of um, some designers that I was really into when I was in high school, uh, Yoji Yamamoto and Isimiyaki who had this boxy, minimalist style that I really just loved. And I, I still like it. And they also had a lot of white, black and grey colors, which was my wardrobe back then. I never wore colors when I was in high school here in Denmark at any rate. I would say still about 70% of my wardrobe represent, is represented by those colors, if not more. So I really, yeah, I'm really into both the Nordic patterns and the Japanese patterns, but as you'll see in later videos, um, also venturing into other kinds of patterns. I really want to knit myself um, a lace summer cardigan, but I haven't seen any patterns yet that don't require wool. And I don't know if I can just alter it and use like linen or something like that, but I feel I really need like a, a summery cardigan, but not too sort of, not too romantic not too yeah I used the word cutesy last time I think that's what I mean I'd like it to be delicate but not you know I don't want ruffles for instance but I'd like lace mm, so pondering that just want to talk a little bit about stash and knitting cue because I think that's you know it's uh, those are words that you hear all the time on knitting podcasts um, if you don't want to stick around for this talk, you know, thank you so much for being here. <laughs> uh, but I will be answering a few knitting related questions, uh, obviously also. And I think this is this is pretty knitting related, I think. Um, but I remember when I came out of the Brooklyn General Store in New York and I'd bought yarn. For There was an instant where I said, all right, you're not going to buy any more yarn for quite a while now because you've just splurged. And then another part of me, this is me having the little angel and the little devil, very Donald Duck style. Another part of me said, hey, don't tell me what to do. Why would you police yourself that way? You've, you're in New York. You have this one-time opportunity. Of course you're going to buy yarn. And why would you limit yourself? Why would you tell yourself you're no longer allowed to do something that harms nobody and that brings you joy? Okay. So I was like, yeah, okay, you got a point. <laughs> um, so the same kind of goes for um, when you sort of 
find yourself spending quite a lot of time on Ravelry looking at all sorts of patterns and adding them to your favorites. It's very innocent and and um, and you don't commit to anything when you just add something to your favorites. But if, if my list of favorites becomes overlong, I think I'm going to begin to sort of curate it and, and remove some because I really want it to be things that I would actually like to knit and not just, ooh, I like that. It's no big deal when it's just your favorites list on Ravelry. It's another matter entirely if you do the same with yarn. Ooh, I like that yarn. Bye. Um, and I think that's kind of where I'm at, where I'm feeling, I wouldn't say extremely overwhelmed by, m by the yarn that I've bought, but I want to be more mindful. This is a little list of the yarns that I have right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have yarn for nine sweaters. Well, one of them is a mix of stash or a mix of scraps. So eight. And one of them is actually also the Kutra top. So, okay. Seven um, projects that I have yarn for right now. And instead of just acquiring more yarn, I want to go through that list because I think I'm afraid of falling out of love with the yarn. And because, you know, new patterns, new yarns keep popping up, vying for your attention everywhere if you don't take care. At least that's how I am. And then the other ones are pushed further back in the queue. So that's a little uh, tricky. And um, so I think I'm worried that I won't ever get to a certain yarn if I don't decide to knit it, if I'm not more mindful. Because no doubt if I knitted all of them and I had no stash tomorrow, I would still find lots of yarns and lots of patterns that I would be very tempted to buy. So I will be okay. It's not like you have to hoard. I know some people um, love this and they have this, you know, they're very sort of, um, you know, they're sitting there in front of their stash with great equanimity and it looks like a yarn store. <laughs> I, I can't do that. I don't think I can do that. So I'm gonna try to at least every other project has from now on has to be something where I already have the yarn and I know it's for this particular sweater. A few of these, by the way, um, is La bien the, fo the Fox Thoughts Pullover. And oh, I even forgot to write the Morinoko yarn and uh, the Snow Crop is on here. So that's, you have to add that as well. And then the Sondra yarn for the Easy Like Sunday Morning, if that's the one I end up doing. And then I have the Fleur Morganite, as you know. I have a contender for that yarn, let's see. And then I also have some Newton yarn left in my stash. And I think I'm gonna experiment with that in the autumn and see if maybe uh, my skin will accept another batch, another colorway. Uh, because Carmen, when she was here, told me that they do change, you know, they're not all equally rustic or equally soft. And so presumably there may be a little less lanolin in some of them or, or something. You know, I'm going to try. And I'm going to try because I saw something on her and Jackie's podcast that Jackie did with a pullover by uh, Sari Norlin that I just want to try. But it's so gorgeous. So go check that out. But also in terms of uh, not buying more yarn, that doesn't apply if I go somewhere where there's a yarn shop because that would be souvenir yarn and I wouldn't be able to get it in Denmark. So of course it wouldn't apply if say I went to Rhinebeck. Sadly I probably won't because it's it's a little far away. Oh my gosh but it looks so tempting and um, I've just seen the grocery girls went to Farmer's Daughter Fibers a retreat in uh, Montana and it looked so amazing. Montana. I, it's just, I, for some reason, I've always wanted to go to Montana. So that was very tempting. I was already beginning to calculate, do they not have another event in the fall? Could I combine that with Rhinebeck? Is that too crazy? Of course, it's too crazy because it's way too expensive. Um, but it's also around my birthday and my daughter is home from this um, school that she'll be attending next year. So it may not look so good if I up and leave, but I'm sorely tempted. So I don't know if any of you Europeans watching know of a similar event in Europe, uh, let me know. I would love to go to one of those. So of course, if I went to Rhinebeck or a similar event, there would be no rules whatsoever. 
because all these uh, amazing yarns would be represented and I would just not limit myself so I don't know if you how do you balance that um, if you have thoughts on this you know by all means share them because it's just um, yeah it's a fine line I have to tread here I feel and somebody also asked me well how do you then decide what to actually cast on good question whatever sort of like the couture top that was at the back of my mind since last summer and I just couldn't you know I couldn't forget about it so it's something that either excites you or you can't forget about for me or that you really want in your wardrobe or that it's just it's a beautiful knit or that would be fun to knit sometimes all of the above you know I'm the type of person that will just go that excites me the most I'm gonna cast that on uh, in terms of the Bunrin uh, by Iris Shimizu I think it was also um, I I felt I would be able to use some of my stash I wouldn't have to buy new yarn and it was a small project so I could see what her patterns were like before I uh, take on some of her sweater patterns which I will definitely do oh and by the way it was Perrine Merci Perrine uh, for uh, drawing my attention to this designer I'm completely all over Iri, Iri Shimizu so Merci Perrine and I don't know sometimes maybe you're like that too when you're sort of maybe halfway through a project your mind already wanders to the next project hmm. mm -mm, that's not mindful it's fun and it's uh, innocent but still you know if you continually do that you're never actually in the moment with with the project that you're working on which is a shame okay so a few questions from some of you uh, somebody asked me about needles and I think I've already answered that a little bit I use so far only knit pro simply because it's what my um, local yarn shop has but then I also have um, then I also have a few um, seen it um, cable needles and I would like to try at some point the chowgu of course that everybody talks about but um, I have to I have to be somewhere where I can actually buy them locally and not uh, import them from the United States or something somebody asked me how I care for my knits and right now I don't do anything special they're just lying on a shelf uh, my sweaters are lying on a shelf up in my wardrobe um, I'll show you and I don't have any sort of uh, wooden anything uh, in between them because I haven't had any problems with the knits I've had so far the the knits I've had before I started knitting and I don't know why I think uh, one reason is that our house is pretty dry I don't know if there's less of a risk of moths I've considered taking some dried lavender from the garden or you know cutting some lavender from from the lavender bushes when they're in bloom and then um, drying it and putting it up uh, in between my knits it's gonna smell nice also so I think that that's that may be a good idea I've only washed uh, my knits right after I've um, knitted them I don't typically wash anything woolen very often whether it's hand knitted or store bought I will hang them out to air because that's what I've been told by many experts it's th the best thing for wool um, of course that's different if it's super wash or if it's um, plant-based fiber but I typically will hang them out to air more than wash even if I get a stain on I'll try to uh, see if I can remove that locally instead of putting the whole thing into into water um, somebody also asked me about um, the non scratchy yarns that I've tried out so far and I have actually been making a list um, I have this list of um, here you can see this is very sort of just notes for me I have a yes a maybe or partially and a no um, and on the no I can say that I have Jensen yarn which is a Danish woolly wool that you know it, it's it's uh, it feels itchy to me sadly even though it's a really good yarn and I also have the Santinus Gan Tun silk mohair which is a silk mohair that has wool in it 15% wool or something and that means that I can't wear it very well and since there are so many other beautiful silk mohairs on there it's on my no-go list and then also the Sentinus Duo which is a mix between uh, wool and cotton but for me when I knitted the top last summer uh, by Invincible in it I, I can't wear it next to skin so I should have used silk for that and then tentatively I have Neuterden on the no list and as I said I'm gonna try again because I do have some Neuterden 
lots of nude didn't actually yet left in beautiful colors. So I'm going to give that a chance again. On the absolutely this is soft enough for us sensitive folks. I have the double Sunday from Sentinel's Gone. I have the silk mohair from Isaiah. I have the eco baby from Isaiah. I have the far from um, Wolfolk yarn and I have the cashmere lace by Gepard Gone. And then I have quite a few uh, maybes um, in the middle. I will say that this one, uh, the far, becomes a bit stretchy and may also tend to pill a little. So I wouldn't use it for uh, like garments where I don't want them to stretch at all. And I have also some other yarns in this category of maybe. I think I'll share that in maybe a, a, another video. Maybe I'll try to knit with some of them again to see if I can decide completely on them. Oh, and I have another video where I'm wearing a sweater. It's my house tour video and I'm wearing a sweater that's store bought, but many people by now have asked me, what's that pattern? Would you mind sharing it? And I recorded the video before I began knitting again. So it's, it's not a hand knitted garment. Since so many people have asked me, I've, I've tried to look for something that looks similar. The only one I can find that may look a little similar is the Whirlwind Sweater by a Nordic Knitting Tail. I don't know if any of you know of a pattern that looks similar to it. Feel free to share that. We would be grateful. A couple of people have also uh, expressed a wish to see my local yarn shop. And next time I plan to buy yarn or, or go in there and buy something, I will definitely uh, take you along with me. But apropos my uh, stash talk it won't be just for a while but of course there may be uh, notions or something that I need so I'll make sure to record. A few people also asked me um, about my favorite uh, knitting notions and I don't have very many. I'm not very um, advanced in that sense to be honest. I do have the the barber cords um, to place my needles on hold or to put on my needles when I want to try something and the circumference isn't wide enough for me to try it on. And I've had them from the very beginning. Oh, and something else I wanted to mention in that connection to do with the provisional cast on. As you can see here, um, the provisional cast on is this yarn. And um, I think most videos recommend that you use uh, another piece of yarn. And I've seen also a video that uh, tells you you can use these, uh, the barber cords. But I would say that depends on what yarn you're using because I thought about doing it for this because it would be uh, very uh, handy once I had to uh, slip the stitches onto a needle. However, this is quite a bit thicker than the yarn I'm using, which would mean that these stitches would be stretched. So it definitely depends on the thickness of the yarn you're using just something I thought about. Um, but I have the barber cords. I have, of course, the little stitch markers, not very advanced. I've ordered some that should be arriving any day, which I'll share. Uh, and then I have this, um, yeah, this gauge marker. So this is the gauge, 10 centimeters, 10 by 10. And then you've got the little um, need knitting needle sizes here. And I use that quite a lot because um, the Knit Pro knitting needles yeah, they're, they're good, but the, the little size of the needle is, is erased over time, which is just not useful. A plane. Somebody asked me if I had any resources for finishing, for weaving in ends, and for washing and blocking. Uh, I don't really. I think I recall seeing somebody wash it and I'm washing and blocking and putting it out on, on these blocking mats with uh, pins. I think it was Newtonomy. Was that you? Over a year ago? I, I seem to remember that you, um, Newtonomy, uh, on Instagram. You should go check her out anyway. She's got a beautiful account. Um, but I remember seeing, I think it was her, who put these uh, needles uh, on the, or these pins on the finished garment once it had been washed and put it out onto his um, blocking mat. And I'd never seen anything like that before. And I was like, whoa. So for a while I didn't do that. Uh, I put it simply on towels. And then at one point I thought, okay, let's get in the game here. Let's get these proper uh, blocking mats. So uh, the next time I block something, I can, I can show you footage of that. They're just really uh, easy sort of uh, foamy, I think kids playing mats. And they were not very expensive at all. 
Uh, and then you, and that same shop had pins to put it in, so voila, that was handy. In terms of um, washing, um, I have this little bottle of Eucalan that most of the local yarn shops here sell, which is the sort of leave-in thing that you don't you don't rinse the garment afterwards. That's also very handy. In terms of finishing, I don't have any resources, and I also sometimes should definitely uh, I could be better at finishing. But I think most things would be available on YouTube. I'll, I'll look into it and if I find something I'll get back to you. Somebody asked me, have I got a partner and have I knitted for him? I do have a partner but I haven't knitted for him. I knitted for my previous partner back in the day, 25 years ago. And I actually made some pretty beautiful sweaters, uh, if I do say so myself. I'll see if I can find ancient pictures of them. I remember one of them was color work and may even have been something like mosaic knitting. I don't remember the, the technique. And another was definitely a cabled uh, turtleneck sweater. But my, my, my partner is, uh, I'm not sure if he's knitworthy to be honest, because even with things that he buys, he's always, mm, 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 am I gonna wear that? I'm not gonna knit a whole sweater for somebody who's gonna go, mm, nice, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna wear it. No way, but I wouldn't mind. I mean, if he'd wear it, I'd love to. And finally, a little something on the knit along. A lot of you expressed uh, a positive attitude or a desire to take part in a, in a Nordic knit along, and I think that could be so much fun. I don't think it's perhaps a good idea to knit the same pattern, because apart from people having perhaps different tastes, it's also going to be tricky for people in the southern and northern hemispheres to, to knit the same thing, because right now I know in, in the southern hemisphere you guys have winter, and clearly we do not. Even if it's a gray sky now, it's, it's still warm. Um, so you may want to knit uh, a sweater when we are knitting a summer top and vice versa. So I think the criteria should be that, um, I don't know, is it, is it too narrow or too strict if you say a Nordic designer? I don't know. I mean, there should be a point in it being a Nordic knit along. And Nordic, just I may have mentioned this before, but Scandinavia is Norway, Sweden, and Denmark. But the Nordic countries also comprise Finland and Iceland and the Faroe Islands. So there's a good amount of, of um, knit designers that you can choose from. And if you, if you still think, hmm, I'm not sure, well, you know, check out what they have. Um, you know, you've got lots of gorgeous designers. Um, who have uh, designed lots of different things and for different tastes, I think. Um, I think I'm going to enter my Kutar top by Sari Nordland in the knit along. I haven't found out how to do it on Ravelry yet, but of course it would be a good idea to set up a Ravelry group. I don't know how to work that yet. I've mainly refined my stocking skills on Ravelry so far, but I think on Instagram you just set up a hashtag and Bob's your uncle. There's the knit along. I'll figure out all the details for my next knitting video and until then maybe you can begin to uh, check out patterns or yarns um, you know it could be fun and I would love to see what you guys are working on and of course anything you're already working on now is completely acceptable um, this is definitely not one of those ooh all these rules kind of knit alongs because that's fun for nobody. I've I'm myself I'm very hesitant about knit alongs because I'm always like ooh I don't fulfill that criteria ooh I don't fulfill that either, you know. So it should be fun and casual, and relaxing and uh, something we can share. Not really sure about prizes yet. I know that people do do giveaways on YouTube channels. Uh, I haven't been in a in a financial place so far where it has paid off much other than pocket money. So I'll I'll see what I can do about that. However, Caroline from Aegunit has promised to uh, give away a pattern, so I can say that. And um, I'll see what else pops up, because I think we've got until the end of the year. Because that way you can do either um, something summery or something wintry, or fall or spring, depending on where in the world you are, and depending on on what you feel like and then you've got time because I think also many people I know here in Denmark are going to be on their summer vacation soon and may not be knitting that much maybe it's the same for you finally just uh, what sparks joy is basically being able to sit outside if you live in a climate where you can sit outside a lot often all the time 
Of course, it's a given for you, but for us in Denmark, it's not a given. I know for my own part, I like to spend as much time as I can outside now, because it's just, you know, once you hit October, maybe even sooner, we're going to be inside for the following seven months or so. So this definitely sparks joy now, including the garden, including the birds, including, yeah, all of it. Can I just circle back to the quote before we end here? Be yourself, no matter what they say. <laughs> Sting knows, you know, so, uh, so why don't we uh, agree to just be ourselves? We can always improve, of course, but if your style is completely different from mine, that's fine. There's no right or wrong in this. It's all good, as long as it sparks joy and uh, makes you calm and peaceful. If somebody doesn't like that, well, that's all right. They don't have to. We have to be at peace with that, even though it can sometimes be difficult. Yeah, I don't know if you even saw this. Oh my goodness, the peonies now. Will you look at that? Also one of my favorite flowers, I have to say. They definitely spark joy. And these were picked from my own garden. I made sure to plant lots of them back when I created this garden because I knew I would want to pick from them. So I also have to be out there every day to see what's uh, in bloom now. You know, really have to make the most of it before it's all over again. Okay, so I think that's that for now. If you've stayed until now, thank you so much. I so appreciate that you're here. I appreciate you just watching. And of course, I also deeply appreciate any comment you might want to share. And I thank you for the gift of spending some time with me here. Because our time is the most precious thing we have. So thank you so much. And I wish you joy and happy knitting. Happy summer or winter, wherever you are. And I look forward to seeing you next time.